Hello, welcome to the Thursday, July 23rd, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. A little bit of a wrap up about the F5 vulnerability that was CVE 2020 5092 from Rick today. Now, Rick spots still some exploitation against this vulnerability and noticed one binary in particular being downloaded from an IP address that he's sharing in this diary. In addition, we also got some user comments. And yes, that's something I observed too, where attackers are adding users to the system. So double check your Etsy password and also your cron tab. That's typically what we have seen in the last few days, how attackers are taking advantage of this vulnerability. And then we got a new set actually of vulnerabilities, including proof of concept code that does show how signed PDF documents may be modified without it actually being visible in common viewers. So the idea of a signed document is that you add a digital signature, uh, encrypted hash and that it does protect the entire document. Now in many variations of this, only a certain part of the document is protected and it has been tricky to then properly communicate which part of the document is actually protected and which one isn't. And that apparently is sort of a little bit the root cause here of some of these vulnerabilities. Now the first vulnerability they're talking the universal signature forgery. That's a little bit simpler. All you do is you essentially modify the signature so it is corrupt. This will sometimes, and that depends on the viewer, prevent validation of the signature, but the signature will still be displayed. The scenario I initially described, that's really more the incremental saving attack. PDFs have the ability, and we actually talked about this also with malware, where changes are just being appended to the document and then being inserted into the document as the document is being rendered in the reader. And in this case, the actual sign part isn't being changed. We just add additional parts after the signature and well, the reader will display it as part of the document and not necessarily explain to the user that this part of the document or these changes were added later and are not part of the actual actual document that was validated with the signature. The final and third method is a little bit more complex, a signature wrapping. What this signature refers to is where we take the document, we insert initial additional content, but then add pointers to essentially skip uh, that additional content as the signature is being uh, verified. Either way, don't necessarily trust a digitally signed PDF blindly. Now, uh, the article also mentions a little bit that uh, you know digital signatures actually tend to be more secure than uh, physical signatures because a physical signature is often just on the last page of a document. So it's often possible to swap pages in the document without that change uh, being detected. Well, I guess that's why sometimes you're being asked to initial every single page of a particular contract. And of course, on last Tuesday's Patch Tuesday, everybody focused on the DNS vulnerability. We did as well. And there were a couple of other gems hidden sort of within uh, this particular update. For example, a vulnerability in SharePoint, CVE 2020-1147. Well, we do have a proof of concept exploit for this vulnerability. It's a classic deserialization vulnerability and really not that difficult uh, to exploit. The particular proof of concept exploit does start MS Paint as a sample executable, which will be running under the context of the IIS web server. So if you are running Microsoft SharePoint, definitely make sure that you have CVE 2020 1147 covered. 
And we got another interesting supply chain style attack against Twilio. Twilio is a cloud-based messaging platform often used to send SMS messages, but can also be used to route calls and uh, do other voice over IP, even video over IP related tasks. Now, apparently what happened here was that Twilio not only left a S3 bucket exposed as in world readable which wouldn't be actually that bad because it housed javascript that twilio would like you to include in your web application but instead of just keeping it readable well they kept it writable and bad guys figured it out and were able to then add malicious javascript code to twilio's libraries the result of course was that anybody using this twilio task router SDK did include the malicious code in their application, which luckily was actually not really all that bad. It was some adware, but could very well have been something like the next uh, mage card or similar exploit. Twilio, of course, fixed the issue by now, and there shouldn't really be much that you should be doing at this point. But if you downloaded Twilio's code during the time of exposure, then probably you do want to double check the code that you received. This is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.